Gordon, the big engine, has been pulling the big express for many years and loves it very much. Lately, however, Gordon had been quite busy and was beginning to feel burnt out. You need rest, says his doctor to Gordon one morning. I'd like to send you to the crew for a while to restore your energy. Gordon wanted to protest, but he knew Stopham Hat was right. Who will take my coaches? he asked. Don't worry, Gordon. We'll find another engine to pull the express while you're gone. Gordon's trip to crew was arranged, and he left next day. So Tottenham had called on Boko to fill Gordon's role for a few days. Of course I'll help, sir, said Boko. I would consider it an honour to pull the express. Very good, Sir Tottenham Hatt smiled. Your crews will prepare you for your first trip. Later that afternoon, Boko waited patiently at the station for Diesel to shunt the evening express train behind him. But Diesel was in a foul mood. Coaches, coaches, coaches. Why can't Thomas or Percy show these foul boxes on the wheel? I have better things to do. Boko heard Diesel and spoke severely to him. Thomas and Percy don't complain about shunting coaches. They're really useful engines. You should learn from their example. Diesel scoffed. He didn't like the steam engines bossing him about, and he was certainly not going to be told what to do by another Diesel. But instead of arguing, he decided to play a trick on Boko. Oh. I don't mean any disrespect to the coaches, or to Thomas and Percy, Diesel oozed. I'm only upset because I've heard about these coaches. What about these coaches? I'm afraid for you, Boko. I've heard that these coaches are haunted. Diesel pretended to be scared, but Boko was having none of it. Don't be daft, Boko laughed. It's true, Deez replied. I've heard it from our dear Sir Topham Hat. These coaches are old, and spirits walk up and down their corridors, screeching into the night. You're full of sour oil, Boko said, but he did feel uneasy. <whistles> then the guards also blew, and Boko jumped. Diesel smiled deviously as he realized his plan was working. Just remember what I said. There are spirits about. Soon, Boko was out on the main line with the Evening Express. He was making great time, and the ride was very smooth indeed. The sky had turned dark and the moonlight showered the countryside below in a bright light. This is lovely, I see why Gordon loves pulling the express. As they approached the top of Gordon's hill, the driver checked Boko's speed. As Boko began to brake, he heard a strange noise echoing from the coaches. It lasted only a few moments, but then it came back, louder and louder. It sounded to Boko like something was screeching. <gasps> screeching! Boko gasped. Diesel was right! Without thinking, Boko let off his brakes and began speeding down the hill. Slow down, boy! Slow down! His driver bellowed. But Boko was frantic. The station came into view, and Boko's driver knew that if Boko didn't slow down, there might be a crash. The driver wheeled around and turned the emergency brake on. The brakes on the train clamped down hard, and Boko came to a spluttering standstill just outside the station. The passengers were furious. They clambered out of the coaches and told Boko and his driver how silly they were. Soon, Sir Topham Hatt arrived to see what the matter was. Boko, I'm very disappointed. Your driver should not have used the emergency brake on you. You are not a relic here. It was the ghosts, sir, Boko said. Ghosts? What ghosts? There was screeching, like a phantom screaming into the night. The top and walked over to the coaches and inspected them. When he came back, he was smiling. There's no ghosts here, says the top and 
These coaches were screeching because their brakes had become worn down. They need to be serviced. It was only their brakes, sir. Yes, Boko. I'm surprised with you. You've always been so realistic about matters. How did the idea of ghosts haunting the train ever get into your head? Boko told him about Diesel. Hmm. I see. The next day, Sir Toppen spoke severely to Diesel. I will not tolerate you manipulating my engines, Diesel, he said. Your story put a lot of passengers in danger. Diesel stood there, silent and sullen. I think it's time I put an end to your deeds. From now on, you will work at the scrapyards, long away from my engines. The scrapyard, sir? That's a desolate place. Good. You belong there. Diesel was speechless.